Here goes Shane Maximin. Good look for the pass for Tammy Abraham. Finds him and Tammy Abraham scores. Now it is Miguel Almiron. Could look for a cross or a cutback for Longstaff. Goes for goal. What a finish. Now we've got some major decisions to make in this episode. As you guys know, last episode we got an offer for Dubravka. Whether we sell him or not, well, we're going to make that call in today's episode. And let's not forget, we've got some pretty big Premier League games coming up in this one. Manchester City at the Etihad. Now I do remember last season we beat them at the Etihad. So I'm hoping for something similar. We're going to get through quite a few games in this one. And even we'll be playing Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. So it's going to be an episode where we've got some really tricky Premier League games coming up definitely got a lot to look forward to in this one with the transfer business and of course premier league games so it should be a cracking episode and if you are enjoying this series come in with the support drop like in the video subscribe if you're new around here and let's kick things off press conference the kick off today's episode sign ilan maislier from leeds as he's got good potential and he is young you know what this might be the perfect option for us for that goalkeeper spot if of course we do make the decision of selling to Bravka. He's only 21, I think he'll be relatively cheap, plus he's 6 foot 5, he's gonna be massive in goal and I think he'd be the perfect replacement for Dubravka so you know what we'll keep tabs on him, I'm gonna scout him but of course it all depends on whether we do end up selling Dubravka or not. That decision will be made later on in this episode, but Maislia is a very good option and we're going to scout him. Next up, why don't you use the feature where you make your players run forward by controlling them? So, I presume you mean the creative runs feature that's new to this year's FIFA. It's pretty much one of the most pointless features ever because half the time when you put your other players on a run, they just run in a weird angle and it just doesn't work out. It's very ineffective and that's why if you even see the pro players playing FIFA, they don't even use it. So, it's super pointless. And I think just the way normally you play FIFA is good enough to win. So that's why I don't want to mess with stuff that just I know doesn't really work in this game. So that's why I don't really use the creative runs thing. It's it's really pointless, guys. Trust me. Next up, play Joe Willock more as whenever he plays, he performs and adds something to the team. You're not wrong. Joe Willock actually has better stats than Buendia this season. Four assists and one goal from Willock compared to two goals and two assists with Buendia so it's actually incredible. Willock even has a better average rating so you're completely right. He gives us something extra whenever we deploy him in that camp spot. Maybe it's the physicality, the presence and his ability to run forward and run in behind because he does a lot more in that camp spot. He tracks back as well whereas Buendia is more of a you know number 10, a classic kind of a number 10 who creates dribbles and creates chances, passes and all that but Willock is much more. I feel Willock fits the Premier League a lot more. No denying Buendia is a great player, but just because of that reason, maybe it's worth in certain games having Willock over Buendia. And that's what we're doing this season. Both Willock and Buendia have the same amount of games, and I think we'll keep that team going. Both, I think, are very important for this setup. With that press conference done, let's move on. Another episode where Saint Maximin really stepped things up. I mean, he is becoming a leader of this team, especially with his goals and assists. This season, he is our top goal scorer. He is 85 rated now, and last episode, he was superb and that gets him another player of the episode award. It's now time to make the big decision whether we sell Martin Dubravka or not and from what I gauge from the comment section, you guys kind of want me to sell him because it just makes business sense to do so. He's 32, if we can get like 10 million for him, it just makes a whole lot of sense because with that money, I think we'll have enough money to sign another decent goalkeeper so it won't really affect us. Probably a younger keeper like Ilan Maislia so it just makes sense, you know, this deal. So that's why I want to negotiate and see how much money we can get for him. Let's see what Schalke are willing to pay for him. Since he is 32, I don't really expect them to go much more than what they've currently offered. But I'm still going to try countering with 11 million. Let's see if they're willing to accept that. They're willing to pay 10.3. Let's counter with 10.7. Just trying to get the maximum amount of money we can get for, of course, Martin Dubravka. Nope, 10.3 is the maximum they're willing to go. And you know what? Fair enough, I think I'm going to accept a 10.3 million for Dubravka and it looks like he'll be on his way to Leeds United come January and that means once we do get to the January transfer window, signing a goalkeeper is 100% our priority. Meanwhile, we also have a big offer for Buendia but of course he's a player I'm not really keen on selling so we'll reject that. Also have a quick look at our sponsors tab because well we aren't really making progress as quickly as I expected. We've only scored about 18 goals so far in the Premier League and we need to step things up to complete that objective. 
Apart from that, we've won, I think, four games at home. Again, we need to speed things up to get that Adidas deal. And to be fair, in the Prem, we're close to that top six spot, so can't really complain. And things are going pretty okay in the Europa League. So we're doing fine, I suppose, with our sponsorships. Let's see how we can progress in this episode. As I said, in this episode, we've really got some big Premier League games ahead of us, starting off with a game against Leicester City, who, by the way, are sixth in the Premier League. If we win this, we go level with Spurs on points, which is awesome. Plus, we close the gap down with Leicester just a bit, but we know they're not an easy team to play. We're playing at St. James's Park, though, so... I'm kind of confident. Now, as we know, Dubravka is probably going to be on his way out in January, but until then, he's still going to start every single game for us, and I'm hoping on the pitch he can still deliver. Looking at the team we've got, Toliso, Abraham, Buendia, Almiron, basically my strongest team that I can put forward, and let's go out there and beat Leicester. Our last Premier League game was against Arsenal, and that didn't really end up well. We lost 3-1. And I want to win here at St. James's Park. Our last game in the Prem was, frankly speaking, painful because we got slapped silly by Aubameyang. He scored a hat-trick against us. I don't want the same outcome here. I know Jamie Vardy is capable of that, so we've got to be alert defensively. And I feel like we can push for the win. Also, I'm sure Leicester will be looking for a bit of revenge because we're the team that beat them in the FA Cup final last season. So I'm pretty sure they've got that fresh in their minds. So... Yep, we might see some extra challenges coming in from, of course, the Leicester players. But let's see if we can cope with that as Abraham. Maybe that was a foul. Probably not. James Madison looking to get in behind. Looks for the pass for Ayose Perez. Brings it inside. Still Ayose Perez. Looks for Jamie Vardy. No, it's Madison actually. Wow. James Madison with the finish and Leicester City 1-0 up. The last thing we needed, man. Such a terrible start for us here. Fair enough, though. Leicester completely opened us up. As I said, they're looking for revenge. We beat them in the FA Cup final and now they, they just want to get something back at us. And at St. James's Park, Leicester City have taken the lead. Are we going to lose back-to-back -back games in the Prem? Nah, man, we can't let that happen. How are we going to push towards top six if we can't beat a team from the top six? So, yep, we've got to step things up. James Madison looks for Harvey Barnes. That's good defending from Fabian Shah as he looks to bring it from deep, which he does so often in this series. And now it's Toliso bringing it forward. That looks to be a very exciting pass for St. Maximin, who gets there somehow. Looks for the cross for Tammy Abraham, but the delivery wasn't good enough. We still have the ball, though, with Toliso. Looks for Tammy Abraham. Can he turn his man? He gets past Evans. The strength is there. Goes for goal, but blocked off by the defender. It's not Evans. It's some other guy. Elvedi or something. I don't know who he is, but Tammy Abraham tried his best there, but... We're still 1-0 down. Things aren't clicking for us. Half time and I just can't get the ball off Leicester City. They've been that good. We've had a few half chances, but that's about it really. Second half, I guess we need some changes. I'm making some bold changes for this second half because first of all, the 4-2-3-1 formation is... It's so defensive that we aren't able to create chances against Leicester. And that's why I'm moving to a 4-3-3. But I've adjusted it a bit to have Buendia as a cam, Toliso as a centimeter, and Phillips as a CDM. St. Maximin and Almiron will be playing as left and right wingers. So they're going to be up forward a lot of the time. So I'm very curious to see how this works. If this is effective, this could be one of the ways we play from now onwards. Because it's more aggressive, we'll see more goals, and I'm sure... That is what you guys want to see. It all depends whether we can get results this way. One thing this will allow Buendia is the ability to cut inside. He's already linked up well with St. Maximin. Still St. Maximin here. Gets past his man. This is looking decent. Ah, the challenge comes in. But, you know, good signs. We're attacking and getting near the Leicester box at the very least. Now, it's it all depends on if we can defend with such an aggressive formation. And by the looks of things, we can. Good defending from Jamal Lewis. See Stami Abraham. Looks for Buendia. I think he's just about onside. Back for St. Maximin. Can't go for goal. We're really getting close to a goal, but it's just not working in the final third. But a lot of positive signs with this new tactical setup. And I think it's a matter of time before we get a goal that we deserve. Tammy Abraham doing well. Looks for Toliso. Miguel Almiron. Can he get it onto his left foot? He can. Shots are blocked again. What do we need to do to score here? Jamie Vardy, is he going to have a party again? Still Vardy on the turn, back for Tielemans. And finally, we're seeing a bit of possession for Leicester in this second half because it's been all us. Ayose Perez, we can't let him turn and shoot. I think we're going to let him do just that. Buendia does well and wins that challenge really well. Good to see Buendia track back and help out defensively. We need runs now. We need runs from our players. Almiron has made a good run, breaks through. Almiron, big chance, goes for goal and he drags his shot wide. That was the moment, that was the chance. 
Miguel Almiron so close. In fact, I think now we need to make some changes. This formation drains Buendia's stamina massively. We'll bring on Joe Willock and Sean Longstaff and just hope for the best. And that's full time. This is such a painful result. Another loss in the Premier League. Like, what's going on? Against big teams this season, we've really not delivered. And that's going to cost us, man. I was aiming to finish top 8, top 6 this season, but by the looks of things, we're playing the same way as we did last season. Something needs to change. And maybe it's the formation. I'm liking this 4-3-3 we tried out. Maybe in the future games we'll give that a run, but huh, I'm really gutted with this result. And there you have it, guys. Dubravka to Schalke is a done deal. He'll be on his way out in January, but trust me, he's going to give his 100% until then. But in January, we'll be on the hunt for a goalkeeper. So adding 7.5 million to our transfer budget, we're looking at about 15 million or so, maybe a little less than that, plus the additional wage budget we'll be getting. So... I think we can spend about 15 million on a new goalkeeper. Any suggestions? Put them in the comment section. Now we're up against third place Manchester City. I'm telling you, the run of fixtures we've got right now in the Premier League is crazy. And I don't know how we're going to get through this. It's City at the Etihad up next. And since we got beat by Leicester, we need to beat them somehow. Or get something out of this game. A win would put us back in eighth spot. And that's what I'm hoping for. Let's see what we can produce against Manchester City at the Etihad. Okay, so I've got the custom tactic for the 4-3-3 formation sorted. So in-game, I can just change it anytime. So let's say against City, we're losing. We can just straight away get into, of course, a 4-3-3 formation to try and salvage something. Or maybe we can start the game with this formation to see how things are going. So... We've got our tactics set up. It's now time to play City. I'm starting Joe Willock in this one. He's been in incredible form lately and I, I just feel like Buendia hasn't really delivered. So Willock starts the game. Apart from that, Tammy Abraham, Almiron, all of the, you know, top players that we've got are starting. That's the City team we're facing and it's going to be scary. But remember guys, when we did play City at the Etihad last season, we beat them 3-1. So if we can get some inspiration from that, that'll be awesome. You know what guys, I'm going straight away with my 4-3-3 formation for this one against City. I know it's crazy, but against Leicester City, there were really signs showing that that formation has got something special about it. And it might just be the thing that sends this Newcastle team to the next level. So we're going to give it a go against one of the best teams in England and just see how things go. Oh my god, City have just completely opened us up. That is brutal from Manchester City. Unbelievably brutal. One counter-attack and we just get completely ripped apart. That's the problem playing a 4-3-3. You're going to be the team with a lot of possession and when you get hit on the break, especially with a side like City, look at them open our defence up. And that's Sergio Aguero ahead. Of course he's going to finish it. <sighs> we're, we're not doing well at all this season, I suppose, in the Premier League because we're pretty much in the same spot we were last season. This is horrendous. We look. Looks for Tammy Abraham, who's managed to get in behind. Good position to shoot from. Tammy Abraham gets us the goal. Joe Willick with the link up. That is such a satisfying goal and something that's necessary for us right now because Manchester City were one nil up. We cannot afford to keep losing. We needed a moment of magic from someone. Joe Willick with the pass. Tammy Abraham with that five-star weak foot now. Put that one in at the back of the net and we're back in it at the Etihad. It's 1-1. And game on. Half time against Man City. Competitive game of football. I think we've dominated this half. We've kept more of the ball. With this new formation, we're more of the aggressor in the game. But that, of course, leaves you to counter attacks. And that's exactly what City did. They countered us and they scored. But we responded well. I think that this game, it's, it's possible we can win this. We just need to get lucky in the second half. And let's see what the second half brings. St. Maximin now. This is looking very dangerous. Cut back for Joe Willock. Sees Toliso open up in space. Chance for him to shoot and Toliso scores. Let's go. We've turned things around. It's Corentin Toliso from a Bayern Munich player who comes up with the goal at the Etihad Stadium. It is Newcastle United 2, Manchester City 1. And this is a big goal for us. If we can beat City at the Etihad, oh my god. Once again, in fact, that'd be brilliant. What a finish from Toliso. Picks that near post spot. Edison stood no chance. Brilliant build-up play as well. We may have just found our go-to formation in this series, boys, because I really liked our performance so far in this game. Let's keep pushing, though, because we know City are just a goal away from equalizing, and we've got to be careful with the players they've got. But a big moment from Toliso. That's why we paid the big bucks to bring him in. Good pass inside for Joe Willock. He's managed to get away from the players, and he's kept hold of the ball. That's, that's really cool. Looks inside for Abraham. Cleverly done. Oh, come on, Rodri. That's a no-nonsense clearance. But look at how high 
our defensive line is. We're taking the game to opposition now. Jamal Lewis finds Willock, looks for Tammy Abraham. Back for Willick now. Goes for goal. Oh, big save from Edison. But I'm loving the way we're playing. This might be the episode where we change our style of play and become a team who keeps more possession, attacks more. Because I think we now have the players to play such football. It's been a big performance from us so far against City. Toliso looks exhausted. So I definitely want to bring on some fresh legs. Longstaff will come on. And I think I'm going to bring on Ryan Fraser for Almiron. And let's also bring on Buendia for Willock. So just some fresh legs coming on for this, for the remaining 10 or so minutes, because I feel like it could be vital. Mendy now, no way, no way, man. This is heartbreaking. This is honestly heartbreaking. How the hell have we allowed Benjamin Mendy to score against us? We literally dominated this game, guys. And to suffer like this is brutal. Honestly, we deserved all three. We genuinely did. This is, oh my god, this is brutal. I don't even know what to say. We deserve to win here and, my god, all game long, we were the team that were, you know, keeping possession. We dominated a Manchester City side. For what? To just, just get mugged off at the end. This is brutal. But, you know what? Ryan Fraser getting in behind. This could lead to something. The cutback was awful. Trust me, Ryan Fraser is one of the biggest frauds I've seen in this series, man. Never does anything for me. Abraham. Buendia, St. Maximin, no, <laughs> I'm trying so hard guys to get something out of this, but, uh, well, it's a draw and we settled with a draw against Manchester City. Now, all things considered, a draw is a good result against Man City, but the way we played, I think we deserved more. But oh well, that's football for you. Next up, we've got a Europa League game that we're just going to simulate with our second team. I feel like we're going to win this regardless, so may as well just get through this one. It's at St. James's Park, a 3-0 win, no injuries as well. I'll 100% take that. It's a Callum Wilson brace and uh, yeah, a brace from him. Awesome to see. We're top of our Europa League group and plus the three free points we're going to probably get against Ludogorets means that I think we've topped our group already. Do PSV have a chance? They may or may not have a chance. I'm not entirely sure to top the group, but we're definitely through to the round of 32. So that's awesome. Home game in the Premier League against 19th place Stoke City. I swear if we don't win this game, I'll be absolutely fuming. And it's thankfully a 3-1 win. Almiron with a brace, Toliso with a goal. I mean, they had a red card in their squad, so fair play. They actually scored the first goal. Anyways, three points secured finally. Next up for us in the Premier League, it's 8th versus 9th. It's Chelsea versus Newcastle United. I'm very keen to continue using my new 4-3-3 formation and seeing if we can use it to dominate Chelsea. But the question is if we can get a result at Stamford Bridge or not. Against City, it was a brutal draw. I feel like we deserve to win that game. But let's see what this one brings against uh, Chelsea. Tammy Abraham to face his former club, Chelsea. I'm hoping he can get on the score sheet in this one. And also, they've got the likes of Werner, Havertz. Werner always goes against me, so I'm kind of worried about this. But let's see what this game holds for us. Let's follow up that previous win against Stoke with a, hopefully a win against Chelsea. Once again, boys, I'm going straight away with my 4-3-3 attacking formation. I'm loving using it, man. It's kind of made the gameplay for me in this series a lot more fun. We're not just hanging back and defending and countering. We're actually being the aggressor. But of course, the problem is when you're playing against good teams like we played against City, it could cost you and it did in the last few minutes as Benjamin Mendy backed the goal. That's a very good delivery. Oh, Havertz almost caught that one brilliantly, but thankfully above the crossbar. Chelsea looking dangerous as ever in this game. Looks for Tammy Abraham, chance to shoot. Ah, the shot's awful, but St. Maximin finds Almiron. Big moment, Almiron goes for goal off the post and in. What a finish from Miguel Almiron. The Paraguayan international bangs in his, well, first goal. I think I've scored with him on the pitch in a long, long time because I feel like he's been doing nothing on that right side for me. But finally, he finds himself in acres of open space. St. Maximin sets him up brilliantly. The finish is lethal off the post and in. with one nil up against Chelsea. We opened them up brilliantly. I mean, the amount of times we had to like pass from right to left, from right to left. But finally, we got this space with Almiron and his finish didn't disappoint at all. 1-0 up against, of course, Chelsea. Come on. Chelsea now keeping a lot of possession and passing again, trying to break us down. Timo Werner here. Good challenge from Max Ahrens. But we cannot break this pressure from them. And Golo Kante now. Brooks finding Kovacic. Now Timo Werner in behind. Unbelievable. It's Timo Werner. It's always freaking him. He literally scores against me every single time. It was brilliant football from Chelsea. There's 
Yeah, I can't really complain. It was superbly done. And it's 1-1. Looking for that open space for Toliso. Strikes it really well, but straight towards Kepa, unfortunately, as he makes the save. With that, it's halftime, 1-1. Again, I feel like we're competing now with the very best in the Prem, which is something we weren't able to do with our previous formation. So, happy with the progress, but second half, let's push for the win. Kind of feels like it's not been Buendia's night, and that's why Joe Willock, the super sub of dreams, comes on. Cut back inside, maybe. Looks for Tammy Abraham, but it's too crowded. Chelsea tracked back incredibly well. And now, we're going to have to try and break them down, which we weren't able to. Chelsea's defence has been phenomenal, and when they do that and they win the ball back... They can just counter with Timo Werner, which is exactly what they're doing. Can't allow that to happen. So I've just taken Timo Werner out. Calvin Phillips is taking one for the team there. Open space here for St. Maximin, which of course he's going to try and exploit. He brings it inside. Alan St. Maximin. I need some support though. Almiron on the other side. Let's see what he can do. Gets past this man brilliantly. Miguel Almiron. Left foot. Oh my god, he couldn't slide it past Kepa. That was brilliantly done though by Almiron. So unlucky not to pull it off. Looks for Kante. That deflection falls perfectly for Werner. I hate this. I genuinely do. Dubravka thankfully with the save. How does every deflection like fall for Timo Werner? Like honestly man, it, everything just works for him perfectly on this game and I hate it. Corner for Chelsea and if I concede from a set piece, I'll be fuming. Nah man, just freaking no. Get it away. Get it away someone. Why is Tolisso running like a freaking turtle there? So slow. Marcus Alonso in space. Finally, Tolisso steps up. And now Abraham helps us get the ball away. Man, that was stressful. But on the break, we could do damage. Here goes Miguel Almiron. And Chelsea's defense is tracking back. Almiron looks for Abraham. Abraham looks for Willock. A simple counter-attack. And a simple goal from Newcastle United in the 85th minute. Joseph Willick with the goal. Every time we bring him on as a sub, he contributes to the team in immense fashion. And he's now just possibly won us all three points. Tammy Abraham didn't score against this former team, but a crucial assist for him. And Joe Willick with the finish. What a depth finish that was as well. Cool as it gets. Look at that. He opened up his body brilliantly. Kepa went sliding in. He had no chance. And we make it 2-1 against Chelsea. We might be able to get a famous win at Stamford Bridge now. Let's freaking do it. We're going to be bringing on Callum Wilson for the rest of the game. I think this is the first time I'm going to be using him after his injury. So let's see what's up with him. Also, long staff on for Tolisso. Let's hang on, boys. Let's hang on to this lead. I'm going to be shifting back to the 4-5-1 or the 4-2-3-1 formation. You know, our default formation with two CDMs for the rest of this game. It only makes sense to do so. It's our job now to just hang on. And soak in all the pressure. Here we go. Just utilizing the pace down the wings. Almiron, the good whipping across for Callum Wilson who almost got there. That was actually a very good cross. Callum Wilson having an instant impact after being brought on. But I feel like that should be it for this game. Referee, blow the freaking whistle. There you go, guys. It's a major victory for us in this series. We've got the better of Chelsea. Newcastle 2. Chelsea won a massive win in the Premier League for us. Telling you, man, this new formation that we're rocking, the 4-3-3... It's changing the way we approach games and that's awesome to see. Our next game is in the Europa League against Ludo Goretz and I'm very keen to find out what happens against them. Are we going to get a free win again? <laughs> Look at this guys. Your next opponent doesn't have enough players to play the next match. Once again, Ludo Goretz are forfeiting. I mean, what's the point of their existence at this point? We get another free win in the Europa League. Premier League wise, we end off the episode 9th in the league. But a game in hand over most teams, if we, which if we do win... We go up to 7th in the Prem, so this episode, things have actually improved for us. So, next up I think is West Ham, we beat them, we go 7th in the Prem, so can't wait for that. Plus, next episode we'll have our final Europa League game, we'll wrap the group stages up completely. Liverpool as well, we're approaching the transfer window, we're progressing at a rapid rate in this series and that I do like. Now before we wrap things up, player of the episode, for me it's gotta be Joe Willick again. Assisted in that game against City. Overall performance was superb. Scored the winner against Chelsea for me. It's got to be him. Almiron deserves a good shout as well. But Willock, man. What an episode again from him. But for now, this is where we're wrapping things up. It's been a big episode for us in this series, boys. Because we, of course, figured out a new tactic to use in-game. We, of course, sold to Bravka. Got results against City and Chelsea. So... It's been a big one, super fun episode. If you enjoyed this one, I'd really appreciate it if you could spare a second and well, drop like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here and well, I'll catch you all next time.